This is going to be a two-part video series on how I designed and built a transmission line speaker or a T-line speaker. There's a lot of information on the internet about um, how these things should be built. None of it seems very definitive and the stuff that is very definitive is way too hard to understand. Uh, something that I found that was kind of the middle of the road uh, instructions is uh, classic TL design by John Risch and that's found at www.t-linespeakers.org forward slash design forward slash classic dot html and if I could just go over the uh, couple of the main points here <coughs> that he has and this is the this is the one guide that I followed there's many guides and there's many different opinions but ultimately at the end of the day you have to stick with one this is what I chose the line area should equal or exceed slightly the cone area of the driver used. This basically means that, uh, given a speaker here, you normally have your um, the metal edge around the speaker. You have the um, little rubber part that attaches the metal edge to the actual cone, and then you have the center of the cone. If you were to take your driver's radiating area from left to right here, from here to here, then you would want the area of your line to equal or exceed that area because you want the amount of air that the speaker pushes to be able to freely travel through the line. So uh, like in this example, and this isn't even to scale hardly, but uh, the driver radiating area of this would be 1.33 square feet. So in this example you would want your um, anywhere in your transmission line, like say for instance right here, to actually have an area of 1.33 square feet. If this were a tube, like a transmission line, then this area right here, the X and the Y, and at any given point, this isn't the scale, I realize this is much larger than the bottom one, but you would want that to be equal to or greater than 1.33 square feet. Uh, number two, the line length should be quarter wavelength tuned to the resonant frequency of the chosen speaker and he in caps here, so this must be important, in the box volume created by the total T-line cross-sectional area times the length and as if the box were a closed box. What does this mean? The T-line that I designed, I designed after the uh, Infinity 1062W speaker. This is the data sheet for that speaker, and you'll notice on it there is a free air resonance, and that's denoted as FS, and that's in hertz, of 30.4. That means this speaker has a free air resonance of 30.4 hertz. So normally you would design the length of your transmission line to be um, a quarter wavelength of 30.4 hertz, which would be the free air resonance of your speaker. So uh, to find that number we would take 1120 which is the um, uh, approximately the speed of sound and it depends on where you're at but this, it's an approximate and divide that by the 30.40 and that gives us 36 foot for a uh, full wave divide that by 4 to get 25 percent and that gives us a line length of 9.21 feet. However, if you take the free air resonance of a speaker, let's say this is 35 hertz, and you make a box that's a quarter wavelength of 35 hertz, then once you stick the speaker inside this box, the box has volume, and that's actually going to change the free air resonance. And when you change the free air resonance, you also have to change the line length. But when you change the line length, you again change the volume, and that changes the free, free air resonance, which changes the line, which changes the volume, which changes the free air resonance, and it's a very, very vicious cycle. So the question is, at what point does the line length of your transmission line speaker give an amount of volume that will make one quarter length of the free air resonance in hertz equal to that line length? I decided to use a program called Microsoft Mathematics uh, to figure this out since it obviously was a complex problem. Uh, this is a, if you Google it, it's a free program that you can download and install. And uh, it's actually pretty powerful. I, I like uh, I like the way it works. So um, grab that 
and this is what I'm going to do. I just started it up. You see it says worksheet graphing. I'm going to click on the graphing tab and I'm going to enter functions right here. First function y is equal to 280 divided by, and I'm going to put a parenthesis, divided is the forward slash, x divided by 12. So in this formula, the x represents a box of a given amount of inches, x inches, and the y actually represents what frequency that given amount of inches, x, would be a quarter wave of. You don't have to understand it, you just have to remember that y is equal to frequency, x is equal to the line length of your box in inches. Formula number two. This is the formula that will define a speaker's free air resonance inside of a sealed box of a given amount of volume. And you need the FS parameters of your speaker. You can probably look it up online to achieve this. But uh, the, we're going to say y is equal to your FS times your VAS over the volume of your box and that's plus one and raised to the one-half, 0.5. And for raised to I use the caret symbol which is uh, shift six on your keyboard, 0.5. And that actually takes the root of it. And I will enter that. Okay. So the speaker's free air resonance in a sealed box of a given amount of volume is Y. F of S is your free air resonance of your speaker. VAS is defined on your TS parameters. Volume is the volume of your box. And the rest is part of the formula. So I will just change this FS to a 30.40. Uh, okay, now if we take a look at the VAS, it is 1.19, and note that it is in feet cubed. We need to keep the volume and the VAS um, in the same units. So if it's a if it's a foot cubed for the VAS, then we also need to make sure that the volume is inputted in um, cubic feet. So the VAS in cubic feet is 1.19 which only leaves now the volume. This is how I figured out the volume portion of the formula. If you take your uh, classic transmission line then according to rule number one the line area should equal or exceed slightly the cone area of the driver used. First thing you have to do is figure out the cone area of your driver. That's the part of the driver that actually radiates, that actually moves back and forth. Um, I was lucky enough to actually have that on my technical data sheet. But if you don't have it, all you have to do is take uh, a measurement from the cone, from one side of the cone to the other side of the cone, here to here and split that in half to get the radius and let's go ahead and use some sample numbers and bring up the calculator let's say um, our radius is uh, nine inches uh, I'm sorry our diameter from one side of the cone to the other is nine inches you divide that by two to get the radius which is 4.5 and then you multiply that by itself so I'm going to multiply it by 4.5 again, equals 20.25, and then you multiply that by 3.14. So in this case, the driver's radiating area is 63.58 inches. So you know that if you follow the, the design rules when you actually build the box, that any given point in this transmission line, if you were to actually take a slice of it, and this is not going to be to scale, But if you were to actually take a slice of it like that, 
if this were box were three dimensional and this were a tube, then this area right here should equal 63.58 inches squared. So as an example, it would be 6.35 inches tall and 10 inches wide inside this box to equal that amount of area. So if we go back to Microsoft Mathematics, um, and in my case, the driver's radiating area is 56.265. Uh, so I'll enter that in. And I'm going to multiply that by x. Now remember that in this formula and in this graph, x represents the length of your transmission line in inches. Now, since we're working on the volume portion of our formula, you know that uh, volume is length times width times depth. So we already have our length times width. In my case, it's 56.265. And x is represented of the depth in inches. So, so far, the, the bottom portion of this uh, uh, part of the formula is actually representing uh, cubic inches. Now, cubic inches is no good because the top part of the formula, the VAS, is actually in cubic feet. So we need to convert the lower section of the formula, the 56.25x, into cubic feet. And we'll do this by multiplying, by dividing it by 1,728, which is actually 12 by 12 by 12. Now I actually wanted the uh, the transmission line that I made to be uh, slightly larger in the first part of the chamber than in the s than in the line itself. So I went ahead and added a um, thousand cubic. Uh, I'm sorry, a thousand square inches to the formula, just to simulate the larger portion of the first part of my box. And click on the graph. Next thing we want to do is choose our plotting range. And I know from just from looking at other designs that my design is going to be somewhere between x represents inches, minimum of 90, maximum of 110. And my y represents hertz is going to be that's the resonant frequency of free or resonant frequency of the box and the frequency we're going to design it for between 20 and let's just say 100 hertz. Click on OK. Now you see the point at which these two cross. Which is about... It's about just a little more than 96 inches. This tells me that just over 96 inches both the free air resonance of my frequency is equal to the quarter wave line length. And that's exactly what we're shooting for. So I know that I need to design my box for um, 96 and uh, approximately an eighth inches, and that's the line length. I think, I think 96 would be a safe bet in this case.